How's it guys, this is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'm going to take you guys through firstly a game week 11 team review. Just kind of seeing how my team got on. It is an international break so I want to get this out quite early on so that we can just talk about game week 11, kind of what went wrong, what went right and how we can fix those mistakes. We're then going to turn our attention to the transfer plan for the upcoming game week 12 and as I did mention, international break, got a lot of time to look over these moves basically two weeks of time to just assess what uh, kind of moves you want to make and if those moves are going to kind of profit the squad in the upcoming game weeks but unfortunately the price rises and the price drops don't wait for us to kind of make those decisions there'll be changes continuously throughout the international break so it is quite important to kind of assess what moves you want to make in case we are priced out of them so that's something you guys are interested in sit back relax and let's get right into it so the first talking point of this video is going to revolve around the international break and I just wanted to give you guys some uh, pointers and some things that you should take note of throughout this uh, two week period. So the first one, as I did mention in the introduction, is going to be all about price rises and price drops. If you guys do have transfers that you can only make with those price rises, I would maybe say go for it, but I would be quite cautious as there are a couple of injuries that usually happen at least in the latter stages of the international breaks. Unfortunately with the whole pandemic situation that we still in we have some options that will return to their kind of parent clubs and unfortunately they'll also test positive we have actually had some players that have traveled to the international camps and tested positive there so you will have to always worry about these uh, certain players missing as we won't get indications that they're going to be missing the upcoming game weeks but I guess this is something that you guys can't really prepare for. But the injuries that do happen, at least in the last couple games of the season, will be something that you guys can account for, as we'll always have the press conferences on Thursday and Friday before game week 12. In terms of the international break injuries, we always have these kind of injuries, uh, such as a Livramento that pulled out to today from uh, the England camp, I think it was the under 21 camp, and has returned back to Southampton. So these kind of injuries are always on the international break. Uh, they're not really that serious. They're just kind of all ways to get out of international duty. And obviously, as a domestic club you kind of want your players to have a break over this international break as far as possible in terms of the international games they're not actually that great unfortunately so if you guys did want to watch some football you can still but this international break will be a kind of against lesser opposition as i think it is the world cup qualifiers so don't put too much attention onto kind of form and fixtures for this international break just maybe look out for those injuries and also those press conferences coming up later next week but now going on to our team review of game week 11 and unfortunately it was actually a pretty good game week so yes we finally managed to get another green arrow on the bounce uh, quite a big green arrow actually was about 100k places so currently just sitting below that top 200k mark after a relatively good score of 73 points so this was above the average by quite a high margin but at the top of fpl currently the rankings are super close so luckily getting above the average did give us quite a nice green arrow how did you guys get on in game week 11? Let me know in the comments down below. I saw some pretty good scores, but unfortunately also some pretty bad ones. Uh, but I'm pretty sure most of you guys will be getting green arrow at least for game week 11. Unfortunately, as you guys know, in game week nine, I did not captain Mo Salah. And when I kind of added the points that I would have had if I did captain him, I think we would have been sitting around that 80k mark. So yes, I know that you shouldn't always dwell on decisions, but I think kind of 21 points is a massive score, at least in the opening stages of this season. And I think even at the end of this current season, come game week 38, I'm going to be looking back on game week nine and just thinking what my rank would have been if I just did captain him. But as I said, not going to dwell too much on that move as it is game week 12 currently. So kind of like game week have passed since that and maybe our luck can be repaid uh, later on in the season but starting off with the bench we have a uh, one notable option there ben foster with a massive 11 points but let's be real guys i was never going to play foster against arsenal when i did have a uh, sanchez versus newcastle unfortunately sanchez we'll talk about him a little bit later on but foster picking up that penalty save did concede though but i think that was kind of an expectation but the penalty save unfortunately wasn't uh, kind of expected so 11 points will be rooted to my bench and it makes it look even worse now that i do have a minus one on my starting 11 but the rest of the bench was a uh, pretty expected Douglas Luiz unfortunately still having that injury so he's not really playing too much for Aston Villa at the current moment we then also have Aspilicueta that didn't feature a little bit of an unfortunate situation there but I mean Chelsea did also concede to Burnley so I don't think he would have got too many points then we do have Ruben Diaz who picked up a clean sheet against his rivals Manchester United so in terms of Diaz on the bench I think I was the correct decision looking at my starting defenders but I do think if I put him one place better on my bench he would have come on instead of Antonio and that would have netted me four points better 
But now going on to the starting 11 and talking about uh, Robert Sanchez with that minus one. Uh, to be honest, I was expecting uh, some returns here from Sanchez. I thought that Brighton's defense was looking quite solid, especially off the back of that uh, quite strong Liverpool result at uh, getting the draw at the end of the day. But he goes out, concedes, and then also gets a red card. So not too much there to kind of speak about with Robert Sanchez. He'll only be missing one game though, so you guys don't have to really worry about replacing him. And with Ben Foster picking up a penalty save, I can't see him losing his spot in the starting 11 for Watford. Going on to the rest of the defense here, we had some relatively good performances. Luckily, we did have Reese James uh, picking up some attacking returns, but at least that Reese James assist to have its goal was perfect for our own FPL team, and I was really happy when I did see that on kind of the score sheet. James, I think, also picked up some uh, bonus points, which took him to seven points. Not conceding their clean sheet, but this was basically a kind of Reese James getting a clean sheet and also one bonus point. But now going on to our two main performers of Game Week 11, that was going to be Jao Cancelo and then also Trent Alexander-Arnold. So both of these two players getting massive attacking returns. I think Cancelo picked up two assists and then also a clean sheet taking him to a massive 14 points with three bonus points to boot. And then Trent Alexander-Arnold getting an assist and then also a goal. Unfortunately, Liverpool did concede. They conceded about three goals, I think, to West Ham. So not too many kind of clean sheet points coming from Trent. But this just shows you the amount of kind of attacking threat that Trent does have and I mean just go and look at that kind of a Rigi goal Trent was basically in the box so massive attacking threat as I mentioned and even if he doesn't get the clean sheet 12 points is nothing too shabby to be honest so fortunately if Sanchez did manage to keep a clean sheet our defense would have had kind of a wipe out there massive points coming from our defenders but unfortunately the five at the back didn't kind of pay dividend in game week 11. Going on to our midfield apartment, I'm going to start off with the bad performer in Bumo. Uh, kind of against Norwich, who would have expected Brentford to go and lose? I mean, it's kind of a weird scenario with Brentford right now. Seems against the stronger teams that actually play quite well, but against some of the weaker opposition, not really putting in the shift, and unfortunately, in Bumo didn't get any attacking returns as well. Did actually start that fixture. I think he played basically the full 90 minutes, but uh, Brentford weren't strong enough for that Norwich side. Mo Salah, our second highest performer in our midfield apartment, and he was going to come in as our captain. Always going to kind of consider Mo Salah as a captaincy option, at least for the next couple of game weeks, considering that effective ownership. So yet again, Mo Salah's effective ownership was about 197% within the top 10k. I know you're probably asking me why I'm looking at the top 10k when I'm not in the top 10k, but it's always kind of a good metric to look at the top 10k when you are analyzing ownership stats. So massive ownership there for Mo Salah, but fortunately, if we didn't captain Mo Salah, probably would have gone for Kai Havertz, who actually outscored him this week with eight points, considering he scored a goal and then also got a bonus point, I do believe. The next top performer of our midfield is going to be Smith Rowe from Arsenal, picking up a lovely goal, kind of the only goal scored in that fixture, but he did not pick up any bonus points. Now, I know you guys might be saying that Smith Rowe didn't do too much apart from the goal, but what kind of annoyed me was Ramsdale picking up a bonus point after getting only one save. So, I mean, considering that uh, Emil Smith Rowe kind of won the game for Arsenal and Ramsdale only made one save, I don't really understand why Smith Rowe didn't get any bonus points, but that's a story for another day, and I'm pretty sure if you guys do own him, you probably were also a little bit sold. So overall, midfield, we had some good performance here, especially from kind of a differential point of view. Unfortunately, though, Mbumo didn't get any returns considering the easy fixture against Norwich. Now, finally, going into our forward department, not much to talk about on the left and right-hand side with Antonio and Vardy both blanking. A little bit disappointing with them. Antonio maybe a little bit less fortunate to not score against Liverpool considering that West Ham scored three goals. But yet again, this is kind of showing that West Ham are scoring a load of goals and Antonio is not being involved. I think last week they scored four goals against Aston Villa. No kind of attacking returns for Antonio. This week they scored three. No attacking returns for Antonio. So in terms of the attacking returns, not really flowing right now uh, for Antonio at the moment. So I'm a little bit worried about him, but at least uh, with some easier fixtures coming up, I'm hoping that he can get back on the scoring wagon. Jamie Vardy as well against Leeds. I was expecting a couple of goals for him, to be honest, considering that Leeds' defense isn't that strong, but he also only racked up two points and not uh, getting too many chances in that fixture. But the final player to talk about is going to be Adam Armstrong from Southampton. So if you guys did watch the deadline stream kind of in the last five minutes i was debating between starting antonio or adam armstrong unfortunately that decision didn't even matter because adam armstrong would have come off our bench anyway but at least the decision making behind that and kind of going with my gut was the right decision to do because i did actually start adam armstrong and had antonio on the first place on my bench 
So Armstrong finally returning us as an owner of him. Uh, coming on our wild card, we actually brought him in. Uh, he scored the only goal for Southampton against Aston Villa. Aston Villa losing that game 1-0 at the end of the day. But Adam Armstrong picking up that goal and a massive three bonus points to kind of repay us as a mega differential. And I was really happy to have him in our squad, especially when you do look at the next fixture for Southampton. It's going to be against Norwich. And I do think they're going to kind of do well in that fixture. And that's why I'm super happy that Adam Armstrong at least scored in this game so that he probably will keep his spot in game week 12. So overall, as I mentioned, pretty good game week, uh, game week 11 for us, 73 points and a nice little green arrow of about 100k places. As I did mention earlier on into this review, let me know in the comments down below how you guys got on and what moves you're considering going for game week 12. But now going on to our transfer plan for game week 12 and the first transfer combination I want to talk about is going to be about Hyung Min Son. So I guess the big debate about game week 12 is going to come down to should you bring in Hyung Min Son, should you bring in Harry Kane or should you bring in neither of them? So right now it's a little bit of a hard decision for me Percy considering that the Spurs against Everton did not look great at all, especially Hyung Min Son looked actually a little bit lost there and Harry Kane didn't look great either. So in terms of kind of the debate of who to bring in, I think currently it might be neither of them and just maybe wait and see our contest sets up before bringing in one of these two assets. I think this international break has come at the worst time possible for the new Spurs manager as I think you would have loved to have had maybe a week or two just to assess the situation right now and set that game plan up a bit better. As I mentioned, Spurs did not look great at all against Everton, a side that have been kind of leaking goals quite a bit so if Spurs didn't score on that one it does worry me a little bit about their attacking threat. So I think over these next couple of days, I'll kind of look and see if I really want to jump on these Spurs assets or if I might want to give them one or two game weeks just to see how they're setting up. But if I do go for a human son, this will probably be the move that I do look at. It's going to be Havertz and Aspilicueta out for human son and Omar Badmadeli. So right off the bat, what I want to state here is that I have the exact amount of money for this move. And unfortunately, Aspilicueta is expected to drop in price. He might actually have dropped in price last night as you guys are watching this video. So please just keep that into account. But if I don't go with Aspilicueta and I don't have the money to take him out, I probably will go for Ruben Diaz instead because he will come in about 0.2 more expensive. So in terms of Kai Havertz, if Romelu Lukaku and Timo Werner, as they are expected to come back after this international break, if those players are back, I'd probably will look to take Kai Havertz out just because I don't think he'll be starting for the upcoming game weeks. Whereas with Aspilicueta has been a major rotation risk currently in that Chelsea lineup, and that's why I do want to get rid of him rather than Ruben Diaz. So these two transfers will allow me to bring in Son and a really cheap defender. So kind of switching up that big at the back, back five, and we're going to bring in a cheap budget enabler. With Omabad Medeli, I am expecting him to start at least for the upcoming games for Norwich. They will have a new manager. They did actually sack their manager after their first win of the season against Brentford. A little bit of a weird decision there, but I do expect Omabad Medeli to start the next couple games, considering quite a good performance against Brentford. In terms of Son versus Kane, Son is a lot easier for me to bring in considering I want to take Kai Havertz out and this has been a move that I penciled in as I brought Kai Havertz in. Unfortunately, I would have liked a little bit more budget there just to bring in a slightly better defender and maybe a 4.5 like a Livermento would have been a better decision but unfortunately, I don't have that budget in my bank so I have to go with a really cheap defender at 3.9 million. The next option to talk about is going to be if I want to take out Jamie Vardy and Jamie Vardy is a little bit of a hard decision at the moment considering that his form has been all out the window, hasn't scored in the last couple games, not even an attacky return unfortunately, but Leicester do have some nice fixtures coming up from game week 13 onwards. So game week 12 against a Chelsea side that's quite defensively assured, I'm a little bit worried about that fixture for Jamie Vardy but it is coming off an international break and I think that Chelsea haven't been that great after the international breaks over the past couple game weeks. So if I want to take Jamie Vardy out, it will allow me to bring three players that I really do like uh, with a minus four. I do have two free chances if you guys don't remember. But to afford this triple up, I will have to take out Aspilicueta and Havertz as well. And then I'll also take Jamie Vardy out to Harry Kane. The three players that I will be bringing in is going to be Livramento, just a nice little cheap 4.5 option. Also wanted to highlight his current uh, injury that managed to take him out of the England under 21 camp. So Southampton did confirm today that Livramento will be kind of exiting that camp through injury. Now I don't you know if this injury is going to be too bad I think it was a back injury and someone did joke over on FPL Twitter that it's from carrying our FPL sides over the last couple game weeks so I'm expecting Livermento to be fine for game week at 12 I think they are facing Norwich so it will be a great fixture to kind of play him in but that also allow me to bring Diego Jota in who has been kind of playing for a Roberto Firmino after Firmino picked up quite a bad hamstring injury last game week. So as we always say, a fit player for Liverpool at 7.5 million is going to be an absolute steal. And with Firmino out injured, I'm expecting Jota to kind of replace him at that striker slot. 
So a little bit of out of position play as well there for Diego Jota. And I just think that Liverpool's fixtures upcoming aren't that great, but I still do think they can do quite well considering their tacky form over the past couple game weeks. We then have the big man up front, the English striker Harry Kane. So this is going to kind of be one of those debates. If I want to bring in Son, I'll go for the previous transfers. But if I want to go for Harry Kane, I'll go for this kind of minus four. And is it kind of worth taking a minus four over human Son? I don't really know right now. I think in the ultimate guide, probably coming up next week, I'll go into a little bit of a deeper dive into these two assets. Just to kind of assess for my own personal team, who's the better player to go for. But this move does allow me to bring in a Spurs asset and Diego Jota, which is a player that I really want to bring in, considering that Firmino should be out for at least the next couple weeks. So let me know in the comments down below, are you guys going for Son or are you going for Kane? Why are you going for either of those options? Are you going for both of them? Or do you already have one of these players in from Game Week 11? Also, let me know in the comments down below, if you guys did bring in Son or Kane last game week, are you kind of regretting it? Would you have rather kept the free transfer, maybe assess the situation, going into game week 12, 13, and just seeing how Conte does set up with Spurs? But going on to the last talking point about chances, I just wanted to give you guys an indication that I do have two free chances. I don't necessarily have to do the previous two moves. So the first move with Son, the second move with Kane, those are kind of possibilities if I want to go for a Spurs asset. But at the end of the day, I don't have to necessarily. The two transfers allow me to kind of have some flexibility in there. If I want to kind of bank one transfer this week, go into game week 13, maybe see how Spurs are setting up, I can do that. And if I was to only use one free transfer, I could also use it on someone like a Jamie Vardy, a Kai Havertz, or an Azpilicueta. And Azpilicueta, I could take him to a Ben Chaw, but with Chelsea's fixtures heating up slightly, I might not really want to go with that move. So maybe I could also downgrade into Livramento just to give me some budget going into game week 13. If I do take out Jamie Vardy, I could maybe go for another attacker. I don't seem to think there's too many forwards at the current moment, so I wouldn't be able to downgrade him that much. So that's why I think I am going to keep Jamie Vardy if I want to kind of not go for Harry Kane as the fixtures coming up in game week 13 plays Watford relatively good game week there so could keep Jamie Vardy and it's gonna be hope that he picks up some scoring form from game week 12 onwards but I think the most sensible transfer as of the current moment is probably to take our habits out if Romelu Lukaku and Timo Werner are back fit if both those two players are gonna miss game week 12 that might just spice things up a bit I might keep Kai Havertz one more game we can just hope against Leicester away he does pick up some attacking returns and that could be quite a good chance considering that Leicester's defense isn't that great at the current moment. But if Lukaku and Werner are back for game week 12, I think the sensible move is probably to take Kai Havertz out to Diego Jota. As I mentioned, Firmino being out for a prolonged amount of time does open the door wide open for Jota and I am expecting to do quite well if he does start at that center forward position. There are, of course, other transfers that I could do, other combinations of two free transfers, maybe take uh, Aspilicueta and Kaivitz out, maybe upgrade them to some other players, maybe a full Foden could come into the equation as a downgrade. Those are all options that I can do, but if I want to go for Son or Kane, I'll have to do the preceding moves that I talked about. But this is basically wrap the video guys, hopefully you did enjoy it, please don't forget to like if you did, and subscribe if you have not subscribed yet. As I mentioned, let me know how you guys got on in game week 11, let me know the transfer plan for game week 12 that you guys are going for, Son, Kane, or who are you actually going to be bringing in before that game week 12 deadline. Otherwise, hopefully you guys have a nice little international break, hopefully you guys rest a bit, give yourself a break from FPL, as I know that it kind of keeps us busy when the game weeks are flowing quite quickly. But I'm Isani Off, it's been Davey FPL, and I'm out, cheers, bye.